So let's look at the relationship between these petrophysical classes and the Dunham classification. And one thing I need to stress is that the three petrophysical classes that Lucia um, has come up with are only valid for matrix porosity and permeability, not for the Vox. The Vox need to be determined separately, which is one of the weakness of the approach. So if we look at the matrix porosity, we have interparticle pore space, and we can look at the different type of texture that we can recognize there. And Lucia recognized grain-dominated fabrics, where you essentially have mostly grain, so that can be grain stones or pack stones, in three different categories. So you have the limestone, that are grain stone and pack stone. And notice that here the pack stone are considered as being mud lean, with very little mud in the pack stone. And then he recognizes two different types of dolomite, which is dolomite with crystal size smaller than 100 micron. Recognize here that boundary of 100 micron again. And dolomite with crystal size larger than 100 micron. And then he has mud dominated fabric, where he has a pack stone that is mud rich, a wax stone and a mud stone. And there he has four different types of, of uh, lithology. You can either have limestone, dolomite with crystal size smaller than 20 micron, dolomite with crystal size between 20 to 100 micron, or dolomite with crystal size larger than 100 micron. And the reason he, come up, he comes up with these different classes is that he can now use the Dunham texture to justify or to predict his petrophysical classes. So class one comprises the limestone that are grain dominated, the dolomite with grain size smaller than 100 micron, and all the dolomites that essentially are, are, have crystal size larger than 100 micron. Class two comprises the pack stone of the you know, mud lean pack stone, the dolomite crystal with a size smaller than 100 micron, as well as the crystal, the dolomite with crystal size between 20 to 100 micron. And class three comprise all the rest, which are the mud, the muddy texture. So the pack stone, the wax stone, and the mud stone, whether they're limestone or dolomite, will have very small pore space and so very little permeability for an increase in porosity. So how about Vogue porosity in the Lucia classification? The Vogues need to be determined separately. So what you can see here is that Lucia recognizes these two types of Vogue, very different types of Vogue. The separate Vogue pores that basically require any fluid to flow through the matrix, and that's a big constraint on flow, so they will behave in terms of porosity per permeability relationship differently, or the vugs that are effectively touching. And so if they're touching, the fluid can go from one vug to the next vug, and you can almost not flow through the matrix. Then in the separate vugs, you recognize that you can have either grain-dominated fabric, so you have a better flow through those, or you can have mud-dominated fabric, in which case the flow will have to go through this matrix that is very fine-grained. For the touching vug pores, it doesn't really matter. It can be either the grain or the mud-dominated fabric. It doesn't matter because the flow goes through the vugs. So in the example of grain-dominated fabric for separate vugs, Lucia recognizes the moldic pores, he recognizes also composite moldic pores, where several molds are coalescing together. This is what traditionally you would call a vug in the uh, chocolate and prey classification. He also recognizes intrafossil pores and intragranular microporosity. All of these porosity are effectively isolated, so they don't contribute massively to permeability. For mud-dominated fabric, example would be again moldic pore, intrafossil pore, and shelter pore. And because here we have a muddy fabric, these pores contribute even less to the overall permeability of the rock. 
Now, touching vogs, on the other hand, can be cavernous vogs or breccia or fractures or solution enlarged fractures or fenestral porosity. Because they're touching, they do contribute significantly to permeability. So this is a really good classification, this, uh, this Lucia classification. And it really revolutionized the way we thought about predicting permeability in carbonates because the three petrophysical classes worked very well for his particular reservoirs. But there was a problem with this classification. The issue is that some of the predictivity is lost. So you can see in this table that, you know, we can predict interparticle, por of interparticle porosity of class 3, 2, and 1 relatively well, at least above 50%. The separate vugs, the ones that are isolated, you can predict their permeability pretty well because they're separate, so they have almost no permeability. But the touching vugs, look at this, the, the square R is 0 0.45, which is really low. So your ability to predict this, uh, the permeability of those vugs is pretty low. If you look at the chocolate and prey classification system, it's even worse. You know, the, the predictivity for the interparticle porosity is okay, but intercrystal is pretty poor. Moldic is also okay because it's usually isolated. Intraparticle is isolated, so again, that's easy to predict. There's going to be no permeability, but the VUGs are really poorly, uh, very, very poorly represented.